This video is brought to you by Sailrite. This video will show you many ways to construct a hem. We're going to show you multiple techniques for finishing the raw edge of a piece of fabric, either for fastener installations or just something that looks great. This video will address just about every hem that we could think of and will walk you through the construction techniques for each one of these hems and also what they're good for. As you watch this video, you may want to skip ahead to the specific hem that you would like to see constructed. And at the very end of this video is a great tip on sewing long hems or long seams. So be sure to watch that. Let's get started and show you how to finish a fabric's raw edge with a specific hem. The first hem we're going to do is a single hem. We'll start by demonstrating the single hem. We've marked the fabric with a ruler here using the soapstone pencil and now we're using the Sailrite Edge hot knife to seal the edge of the Sunbrella marine grade fabric to keep it from unraveling. All throughout these hems we're going to be using the double sided tape, this is seam stick for canvas, to base these hems together. So we'll peel off the transfer paper revealing the double sided tape and we'll create a single hem. This is approximately one inch. A single hem does not provide enough reinforcement for fasteners and it also gives you only one side that's actually finished where the underside will always have the raw edge. That's why we use the hot knife to seal that edge of fabric on the underside. We've sewn a straight stitch down the length of this single hem and here's the result. A single hem that's finished on the top side but the underside is left with a raw edge edge. A single hem with webbing as reinforcement is excellent for fastener installations. Here you can see we're using the Sailrite Edge hot knife again to seal the edge of the fabric since it is going to be a single hem again. This is a Sunbrella marine grade fabric and we're using that seam stick basting tape part number 129 to baste the panel together to make it easier for sewing. We're using a 2 inch webbing here and we're applying the double sided tape to that as well to hold it in place so that we can take it over to the sewing machine and sew it without things moving on us. We'll place that uh, two inch webbing approximately a half inch to uh, three quarter of an inch away from the raw edge of the fabric then create the half inch or three quarter of an inch single hem. You can also create that hem so that it lays directly over the webbing. Here we're using a one inch webbing and we're going to fold the flap of fabric so that it almost hides the one inch webbing. Now this single hem is plenty strong for fastener installations and you'll typically see it on boat covers or covers that cover some sort of equipment where they put snaps or grommets or other fasteners in. We've sewn down the hem securing it in place now we'll sew down the opposite side of the polyester webbing. You can use polyester polypropylene or nylon webbing here. The sun typically does not degrade the webbing because the webbing is on the inside of the cover. The finished hem leaves you with webbing on the underside and a finished stitch on the outside of the cover. Obviously the 2 inch webbing will accommodate larger fasteners while on the other side this 1 inch webbing will only really accommodate snaps fairly well. It is possible that you can get other fasteners in there but you just don't have as much room as you do with the 2 inch webbing. We're sewing along the inner edge of this 1 inch webbing on with the hem encasing the webbing and we'll sew also on the outer edge. The outer edge is probably not as important but it does give a finished look. And the result is on the outside you see two stitches and on the inside you basically just see a little bit of the webbing coming out but that is a single hem so that's why we use the hot knife to seal the edge of the fabric. When you use webbing as a reinforcement when you punch holes you'll notice it'll leave a little bit of fuzz from the webbing. That's not uncommon however it's typically a good enough hole that you can still install uh, for instance this spur grommet easily. When you install the spur grommet or other fastener typically it covers the fuzziness of the webbing. Here we're using the die set to punch this spur grommet into that two inch webbing that is used as a reinforcement for this single hem. Here you can see us using the eighth inch hole cutter and using that uh, cutting block on the back side to punch a hole for a snap. And we're using the deluxe snap fastener installation tool and placing the button on it and the socket on the top side and we give it a blow with a hammer to roll the rivet in place. There a snap is installed on the one inch webbing side. This is the one inch webbing with a single hem. A rolled edge 
is not good for fastener installations. However, it's excellent for a finished appearance on both the top side and the bottom side of the fabric. Here we're applying the double-sided tape, part number 129, to this umbrella furniture fabric. We're creating approximately a half-inch hem here. This is a single hem. And then once that single hem is in place, we'll apply double-sided tape directly on top of that hem and yet create another hem. The second hem laying on top of it is typically approximately one inch. It can be slightly smaller if you choose. There's no hard fast rule for that. This is a rolled edge. It finishes the fabric on both the underside and the top side. We've taken this over to the Sayrite Ultrafeed LSC sewing machine and sewing a straight stitch along the inner edge of this rolled edge. And here's what the finished results of the rolled edge looks like. It's finished on both sides. A double hem is by far the most popular hem in the canvas and sail making market. Here you can see Deb creating a line two and a quarter inches from the raw edge of the fabric. The raw edge does not need to be heat sealed because of the fact that it's going to be a double hem and it's going to hide that raw edge. We're using part number 129, the double sided seam stick, to base this hem together prior to sewing to hold everything in place. We fold up to that line that's been created two and a quarter inches from the raw edge. We'll place double sided tape on top again right next to the fold and we'll create yet another another fold. The double hem is excellent for fastener installations because typically it's wide enough and it also creates enough reinforcement for the fastener. A double hem is probably more popular because of the fact that it doesn't require extra materials. We've taken it over the sewing machine and sewing a straight stitch along the inner edge. The longer the stitch length, the less puckering you get and the less shrinkage you get over long distances. So try to create the longest stitch possible. We're also going to sew along the outer edge of this double hem just to give it a finished appearance. However, that's not required. We're going to install various fasteners to this double hem. Deb's marking the position on the fabric where she wants each one of these fasteners to be installed. We're going to be installing the eyelet, the twist lock fastener, a spur grommet, and also a snap. Here you can see we're using the common sense eyelet hole cutter here to create the four prongs and the oval for the opening of the eyelet for the twist lock fastener. Typically the fasteners are installed with the hem facing down. However, we're installing all of these fasteners with the hem facing up so you can see exactly where they're positioned in that hem that we created. Now all we need to do is bend the four prongs over with a blunt object. And that uh, eyelet for the common sense fastener is now installed. Now we're going to punch holes for the stud. Once the 1 8 inch holes are cut, we're going to use the Telasco dual cavity snap fastener insulation die, place the buttons in that, and then place the twist lock fastener stud on top, and then use our tool that we use to set snaps in place and give it a few blows with the mallet to roll the rivet and secure that stud in place. That's a twist lock fastener installed in a 2 inch double hem. To install a spur grommet, punch a hole in the fabric using a hole cutter, and we're using that uh, cutting block on the back side. Push the eyelet through the hole, put the female portion of the spur grommet on top, place it on top of the anvil, and then give it a few blows with the hammer to set that spur grommet into that double hem. There are obviously many other fasteners. We're going to show just one more fastener. This is a snap fastener, and we're going to use the press and snap installation tool to set this snap into that double hem. There's no need to punch a hole in the fabric. This tool punches the hole at the same time that it sets the snap in place. And all you do is press the lever, and that snap fastener is set in place in the double hem. As stated earlier, the double hem is the most popular. Now let's show you one more thing about the double hem. The double hem can create a lot of balk at the corner here. You can cut out that balk, and Deb's going to show you how to do that here in this portion of the video. Before you sew the double hem in place, unfold the double hem at the corner and use a hot knife to cut the edge of the material away from that corner. You could use scissors as well, however, using a hot knife will seal the edge of the fabric and keep it from unraveling. We're using the Sayrite Edge hot knife here to cut out the bulk of the material here. Now watch what happens when we do this. Okay, so we've cut all of that out, hold up to there, up to there, 
and it's not as bulky here for you to sew because what we had before was this and this again so to compare the two you can see by cutting that corner out which is just like cutting the square of whatever deep you're going with your double hem Thanks, Deb. Now all we need to do is take that over to the sewing machine and you can see how easy it is to transfer from one double hem to the second double hem. Notice there she left the needle buried, lifted her foot, pivoted on the needle, lowered her foot, and continued to sew. That's a great way to make turns. To create a binded edge, we're going to use the one inch swing away binder. A binded edge is great because it just finishes an edge. It's typically seen on window covers or biminis or dodgers. It's a way to finish a raw edge. Not typically great for fastener installations, but it is quick and it's easy and it looks wonderful and you can offset it with a different color. Like here we're using a Pacific Blue one inch binding with a white marine grade umbrella. And here it is. On the top side it looks finished and also on the bottom side. If you'd like to use binding and yet you want to install fasteners, here's a quick way to do it. Place a one inch polyester or nylon or polypropylene webbing on the underside of your project, swing the one inch swing away binder into position, and then sew the binding and the webbing and the canvas at the exact same time. This will install the webbing on the underside of your project and also give it a finished edge on both the underside and the top side and then you can install any kind of fastener you want as long as the fastener fits within the parameter of your webbing choice. We're using a one inch webbing however you can use a one and a half inch webbing or a two inch webbing if you choose. Then you want to sew on the inside of the webbing as well to secure the webbing in place. This finished edge gives you a finished look on the outside as the binding finishes the edge with a stitch on the top of that that secures the webbing in place, but obviously you see the webbing on the underside of your project. We're using the press and snap installation tool and going to install a single snap here just to show you what it looks like. So this is a great application for those of you who want to use binding and finish an edge and you want to reinforce that edge for a fastener installation. That's all there is to it. Sayerite stocks a two inch facing which is a prefabricated facing with the two ends finished. Here we're using a two inch binder with a swing bracket to install this two inch facing to a umbrella marine grade fabric. This two inch facing will be sandwiched to encase the marine grade umbrella canvas in the center. This two inch facing provides enough area to install fasteners and also gives a finished appearance on both the top side and the underside of your project. You notice that every time Deb is sewing these hems in place she's reversing the machine to lock the stitch in place. So here you can see the finished side on the underside and the top side. Looks great. Next we'll be showing a taped edge which is typically used for tarps or trampolines. For our taped edge, we're using a shelter right vinyl material. We've cut this shelter right to approximately six inches in width. Obviously, this is just a demonstration panel. We're applying double sided tape to the shiny side. The other side is a little bit of dull side. It doesn't really matter which side you use. However, we're going to put the shiny side on the inside. Now we're going to crease the material in the center to find the center of this tape so that it folds over to equal three inches. For this demonstration, we're using the trampoline mesh black. There are other tramp materials you can use as well, and the same procedure would apply. Now we'll peel off the transfer paper on top of the double-sided tape that has been applied to the shelter right material and fold it so that it sandwiches the tramp mesh in the middle. The double-sided tape helps to hold everything in place so you can take it to the sewing machine and sew it without things moving on you. Now with the Alterfeed LSC1 sewing machine set up for a straight stitch, we'll run a row of stitches down the inside, the outside, and also the center position of this tape. We've cut the tape fairly wide because in trampolines you need a lot of reinforcing along the edge for the placement of grommets or fasteners. You can put three rows of stitches or more down this tape. We're going to choose to put three rows of stitches to hold this uh, three inch wide tape in place. And here's what it looks like when it's finished. You've got uh, three inch on the top side and three inch on the underside. Now we're gonna install a number five spur grommet. 
To install any spur grommet, first you have to punch a hole in the material, then place the male portion on top of the anvil, the female portion on top of that, and then hit the tool with a heavy mallet, preferably a dead blow mallet or the mallets that say all right sells. If you use a standard hammer, you have to give it a few extra blows because it does take a lot of force to press, especially a large grommet like this number five. And that's typically all there is to installing a taped edge, especially for a tramp or a trampoline. Our next presentation will be for a drawstring sleeve. This is a, how you create a hem for a sleeve insertion typically used on bags. This is the future top edge of our bag and we're measuring down four inches on each side and we're gonna create a wedge uh, down to that four inch mark. So we're just folding the fabric over approximately half inch at the top of the uh, bag down to the point and we'll sew that fold. This is a single fold here. Just a straight stitch all the way down its length there. Do the same thing on the opposite side. This will create a finished edge for the drawstring to exit out of. We're installing this uh, sleeve on a four ounce nylon bag and flag material. We're taking a quarter inch basting tape and placing it along the top edge so that we can create our hem. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and then we'll create a very small half inch hem here at the top, all along its length. When you're done with that, you'll take that quarter inch basting seam stick and place it on top of that half inch hem you just created. Sometimes instead of cutting the double-sided tape, you can pull it as Deb did here, and that'll make it easier for you to pull off the transfer paper. Replacing the cord, in this situation, it's an eighth inch leech line inside the sleeve as we create that hem. We take it over to the sewing machine, reversing at the beginning, and sew down its length. We're gonna finish up this bag, so we're gonna fold it so the wrong side is facing out, and we're gonna put a single stitch down the edge of the bag so we can show you how the drawstring works. We're going to start that stitch right where we started that uh, stitch there at that four inch mark and we did do some reversing though we didn't show that in the video. Now we'll show you how the drawstring works. Take the bag and make it so the right side is out and then all you need to do is pull on the line and that cinches up the top of the bag. So that's how to make a hem for a drawstring or a sleeve for a drawstring. Our final demonstration in this video is a hem for an awning rope. Awning rope is typically slid into an awning track. Awning rope and awning track is available from Sailrite. First use the Sailrite edge hot knife or a soldering gun or a wood burning tool to seal the edge of the fabric. Then apply your double sided tape as you've seen earlier in this video and then fold it to approximately a half inch hem. Once that's done, you can apply double-sided tape on top of the half-inch hem or apply the double-sided tape to the awning rope flange. Peel off the transfer tape, revealing the double-sided tape glue, and take it over to your awning rope and apply it so that that hemmed edge is very close to the awning rope, approximately a sixteenth inch away. You don't want it directly on top of the rope because it can abrade there when it's running through the awning track. You just want it as close as possible. The double-sided tape holds everything in place and notice on the bottom side the hem is completely hidden because it's only a half inch hem. We'll take it over to the Sailrite Ultrafeed LSC sewing machine and sew a straight stitch along this edge. We'll run the walking foot right up against the awning rope and the stitch approximately uh, an eighth inch to a quarter inch down from the rope. We're gonna put one row of stitches here and uh, that'll secure it uh, well enough. However, if you choose to do two rows, you can do that or do a zigzag. Here are some very important tips to consider when sewing hems and also seams. Most of the synthetic fabrics that Sayerite sells are very dimensionally stable. However, when you sew long hems or seams, you may experience up to one inch of shrinkage for every 10 foot of sewing. I call that needle pucker phenomenon. 
When you're sewing, it has a tendency to shrink up the fabric due to the stitch being created. So for every 10 foot of sewing, you may need to add an extra inch of fabric so that your finished result is exactly the size that you desire. You'll find hundreds of helpful videos at www.sayerite.com or check out Sayerite's YouTube channel today for more helpful videos on sewing projects. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.